All right. So we're just waiting a second until we get some viewers on. I don't want to start too soon. I do think that it is 10 a.m. on the dot. So I'm just got the camera on the honeypot ants that we're going to talk about today. We'll just wait another couple minutes. Well, like a minute. We'll wait one minute. How about that? I'm a terrible judge of time, so we're just gonna go ahead and start now. Turn my camera around. Hello, good morning, all of my bug friends. So my name is Jenny, and I run the insect zoo at Iowa State University, and I'm also an entomologist. So an entomologist is a scientist who studies bugs. But as an entomologist, we don't only study bugs we get to study the largest group of animals on earth called arthropods. Now to an arthropod is an animal, but it's much different than humans are. So an arthropod is an animal that has a skeleton on the outside of the body. Does anybody know what that's called? An exoskeleton. So an exoskeleton is a skeleton but unlike our skeleton that's inside our body, the exoskeleton is on the outside of the body. So arthropods are insects, spiders, tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. So even some of the animals we eat, they're very closely related to insects. Now, so as an entomologist, we get to study a whole bunch of animals. In fact, there are more arthropods on our planet than any other animal combined. That is a lot of animals. So today I am going to show you one of my most favorite insects. So insects are an arthropod and they have three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. They also have six legs, three legs on each side. So to be an insect, you must have three body parts and six legs, three on each side. Now this insect is called an ant. And ants are a social insect. They live together. That's what social means. Just like humans, we are a social animal. So right now we are practicing social distancing, which is very hard for us because we like to be around other people. We're used to being around a whole bunch of other people. So these ants are a social insect. Let me tell you that right now, if these ants had to practice social distancing, they would all die. I know that sounds horrible, doesn't it? And it would be horrible. They cannot live on their own. They have to have their sisters in order to survive. So these ants would not survive the social distancing that we humans are doing right now. Okay, so this is the plan for today. I am going to turn my screen around so that you can see this fabulous formicarium. A formicarium is the enclosure that houses ants. So this formicarium and these ants were donated to us by the Isaacs Ant Foundation. It's a wonderful foundation that helps to provide scholarships to those individuals that are seeking or looking to have a degree in science, but they also happen to have some sort of a disability. So if you are interested in looking up the Isaacs Ant Foundation, I will post a link to their website on our Facebook group after this um, live is over, and I'll also post it in this live. 
So this foundation, they donated this formicarium and the ants to the Iowa State University Insect Zoo. And we also have a webcam on this formicarium. So that is live and the link to that is on our Facebook page. And we are the only land grant university to have the honey pot ant colony and the only one in the world to have a webcam live on the honeypot ants. Now, if you tune in right now to that webcam, you're gonna see a sign that says, the ants will be back soon. And that's because I have taken over this. So um, you cannot see the ants right now on the webcam, but they'll be back. So um, I also must mention that the lighting was very hard to get put together for the webcam. So it's kind of rigged up funny. So it's not gonna look very good, but humans don't come in here to see the honeypot ants. We're only letting them see it from the webcam. So um, we cannot travel or move around with these honeypot ants because we are a traveling zoo, but we can't move with these ladies. So we have to keep them in one place. So we thought the best way to be able to share them with the world is to be able to is to be able to uh, put a webcam on it. So I see that there are lots of questions already popping up. So I'm gonna go back through in a little bit and I'm gonna start answering some of those questions. But first, I wanna show you the honeypot ants. We're gonna talk about everything that's in there, including those balls that you are seeing and if they make honey and how long they live and how old they are and all of the cool stuff about their life. And then we're gonna feed them and give them some water. So you get to see how we take care of the ants and what they eat, okay? Are you ready? I am so ready. Here we go, let me turn my camera around. Whoa, check that out. Okay, so we're gonna move up. Well, let me move out first. So this is the formicarium. There are two parts. There's this part right here and there's this area here. And you see I've got this frame built around. That's to hold lights in. And then I've got this light off right now. Whoop, now I turned it on. <laughs> and then we've got a light up there. And that is all for the webcam that we have on it. Okay, so we're gonna start right over here. I've got to tap on it to get it to focus. Can you focus? Maybe I need to go closer. There we go. Okay. So in this corner over here, what you are seeing up here, oh, I've got my finger right there. You see there? What that is, here, I'm gonna use this to point. So all these right here, these big bubbles, look at those. You see those big balls? And then you can also see these little white wormy things. And then you see these guys running around, ladies running around. But what I wanna talk about first is this lady right here. You see that lady with the big abdomen? That is the queen. Now the queen is very important for the colony. She spends her entire life laying eggs. But before she was able to lay eggs, this queen was born out of a different colony. So all of these ants together, we call them a colony. So when she became an adult in her old colony, she had wings. And when she turns around, which she doesn't move very much, but she will turn around at some point, I'll be able to show you where her wings used to be. So when she had wings on a rainy night, she could smell that rain, she could feel that rain, and inside of her, it said, I need to go fly and mate. So that very next morning, she will go out, after it stopped raining, of course, she will leave her colony, she will take flight and look for a male. So the males 
also have wings but are much smaller than the female queens. And they are out looking for a female so that they can mate. Now, how does the male find a female in the sky? That is a very good question. So insects communicate or talk to each other using something called pheromones. Pheromones are a gas or a chemical that is moved, that is sent out into the world and members or other ants, which are of the same species or kind, they can smell or sense those pheromones. So that is how the male finds the female. Once the male and female find each other, they mate while they are flying. And then the male will drop off and he dies because he has served his purpose. His only job in life is to find a, a princess and mate with her to make her a queen. So now the queen has mated and she's gonna come back down to earth. She's gonna come out of the sky and land on the ground. And soon after she lands on that ground, her wings are gonna drop off. She will never fly again. Now she's gonna get right to work after that. She's gonna lay an egg, usually under a rock or a piece of wood or maybe in a little burrow that she finds. She will lay an egg and she's gonna take care of that egg until it turns into a larva. And then after it's a larva, she's gonna feed that, but she cannot leave the house to find any food. So she has stored up a lot of food in her body so that she can feed her little larva. Soon that larva, larva is gonna turn into a pupa and then it's gonna emerge as an adult ant. But that adult ant is gonna be really tiny, <clears throat> really small, much smaller than the, the adult ants that you can see right now. And that adult ant is gonna to start to help to take care of the eggs that she has laid and the new larvae that are there. And it's gonna to continue to grow and grow and grow from there. So now I have said a bunch of words that I'm going to explain now by showing you what they look like. Now first, I wanna see if I can find some eggs. And I do see eggs but they are back behind. Of course they are. These ladies, they like to decorate their house so that it's hard for us to see things. Okay, so these are gonna be difficult to see, but do you see this big ball right there? Okay, now do you see those little tiny white specks right there? I can't get them focused in. Let me see if I can try. Nope. So back behind there is a big cluster of eggs and they're teeny, teeny, tiny. Gosh, they are smaller than, they're about the size of the tip of a needle. That's how tiny those eggs are. And that's how these ants start their life is an egg. And then if you look, you see there's the queen right there. And then if you look over here, do you see all those little white wormy things? Oh, we've got a little lady coming up to say hi. She's like, hey, what are you guys doing? What are you doing in there? Out there. Huh? So you see those little tiny worm things right there. Those are larvae. Those are very teeny tiny larvae. But you know what? Those larvae are in their second part of being a larvae. So they go through many different sizes of the larval stage. And look here, see that one right there? That one is super big. This is a larva that's about ready to turn into a pupa. So ants go through four changes in their life. We call those changes metamorphosis, which means big change. So when they go through the four changes, we call it a complete metamorphosis 
or a completely big change. So they go from an egg, which we saw way back there, which are hard to see. Then they go to larvae. There's another one right there. Look over here. There's more larvae over here. Look at all of them. Aren't they so cute? Sometimes they wiggle around and they think that they're gonna go somewhere. Okay, so after they're a larvae, let's see, look at that one right there. That one's super big. And then there's two little ones there next to it. After they are a larvae and they're really big. So like this one, where'd my needle go? Like that one right there. So when they're really big, then the ants are gonna take them over here to this pile of sand. Do you see this pile of loose sand right here? You notice that how, excuse me, how big that larva is right there. Oh, and look at that ant. You see what they're doing? So what they're doing is they're helping to make a cocoon. A cocoon is, a cocoon is basically like a bug sleeping bag. So it's a bag that the insect makes with stuff from its own body. And sometimes like with these ants, from things in the environment. And they make this bag and they wrap it all around their body. So it's just like a sleeping bag, but for bugs. So it's a bug sleeping bag. So you see the ants are taking that sand and there's probably a larva under this big pile right here that is making its cocoon. So they're gonna bury it in that, but they are also spitting up some of the nectar. They're spitting up stuff to mix it with that sand to help keep it together. So they're gonna cover, see she's very gently, you see that ant there? This ant right here is working very hard and so is this one. They're starting to cover this larva with sand. And that's gonna give the, the larva a little space to make its pupa from, which is the next stage of its life. So, so far we have an egg and then a larva. And then now here, look at how hard they are working. Aren't they working so hard? She's pulling up some of that sand. It looks like it's a string of sand. You know what it kind of looks like? Do you have some kinetic sand? My kids have kinetic sand. And that's what this reminds me of, is the kinetic sand. So look at her, see? Now she's gently placing that on top of the larva. <laughs> looked like some of it fell off, didn't it? Okay, so now they're making a pupa. Let's go look at that pupa. But this pupa is gonna be covered with a cocoon. You remember that bug sleeping bag? Let me just, let me get, sorry for the jiggles. I'm trying to get focused there. If I can lean it against here, it works better. There we go, that's good. Now, do you see these? Those are the pupae. So up in that pile that we were just looking at, the ants cover it with the sand and then the larva lets out the material, which is kind of like a liquid that changes to make these pupae. But inside, of, or to make this cocoon that is around its body, like the bug sleeping bag. And then inside of there, it is starting to change. What do you think it's changing into? It's changing into the adults. You see, there's one right there. And look at these ladies right here. They are taking care of those pupae. They have to make sure that the pupae are warm, which this right here, this brown strip right here that my needle is on, that is a heat strip. 
So it keeps everything right there nice and warm, which is why they pile them up there. So inside, their body is changing. It is metamorphosizing into the adult ants. Now you may have noticed that I keep calling these ants she's or her. That is because all of these ants in this colony are girls. They are all females. Now I'm gonna just pan down around this way here over to this side. So we're gonna now talk about the adults. Oh, guess what I just found? I found a bunch of eggs. So let me see if I can move this light up because it's gonna shine right in there otherwise. <gasps> Look at all those eggs. Do you see that cluster of eggs? And do you see those lady ants touching the eggs? Can you see them? My hand's a little bit shaky. Look at them. They are taking care of those eggs. They are making sure that the eggs are safe, that they're the right temperature, that they have the right humidity or water that they need so they don't dry out. And they'll move those eggs around. Now ants are very, very, very strong and their mandibles, which you can see really well on that ant right there, that's on their mouth, they're those little, things that clamp together, that's how they pick up stuff. Those are very, very strong. But even though they're very strong, they can pick up those teeny, tiny, fragile eggs. Look, there's one that has some in her mouth right now. Can you see that? Oh, she's gonna set them back down. They also need to make sure that they're not staying in the same place too long. If the eggs stay in one place on one side for too long, then the, they may not form correctly. So they are very busy taking care of them. Okay, so right here in this picture, we can see a whole bunch of things going on. Let me see if I can get this up like that so I'm not shaking it around. Okay. So I know you're dying to know what are these big bubbles? Those are ants. This is where this ant gets its name, honey pot ant. So those ants that are the big balls or bubbles, those are called repletes. Now the replete is very important. It stores or keeps safe the food for the colony. Honeypot ants, they don't eat honey, and that's not actually honey inside of there. They eat nectar. Where does nectar come from, my friends? Flowers. So the ants drink the nectar from flowers. But here's the thing, these ants come from the desert. Are there a lot of flowers in the desert? Only sometimes. When it rains in the monsoon season, there are lots of flowers. But then most of the time in the desert, it is dry. So there are no flowers. So these ants, have to store their food somewhere. And why not use a living ant? <laughs> so these ants that are hanging up there and that look like they're balls or bubbles, those are living ants. They are hanging on super tight with little tiny claws that are at the bottom of their legs called tarsal claws. They're hanging on as tight as they can. So when an ant comes back with some nectar, she will come over to one of the honeypot ants and she will feed it to her. Now that honeypot ant that's hanging there, that's the ball, the replete, she is going to store 
that nectar in a, a part of their body called the crop. Now the crop is like a first stomach. So it's not actually their stomach where they digest food, but it's like a storage stomach. If you could think of a hamster stores food in its cheek, it's kind of like that, except it's down a ways into, through the esoph down into the esophagus or the throat. So this ant, these repletes are gonna hang up there for a very long time, their entire life. Now, sometimes they fall. And you can see that there is one that has fallen right there. And the repletes can fall for several different reasons. One reason is that they die. And when they die, they can't hang on anymore. Another reason is maybe it became too heavy and the ant just couldn't hang on to it anymore, and so it fell. Also some movement, which is why we can't travel or move around with these ants. If there's movement, it could knock them down. So when an ant, uh, when one of the, the repletes, when they fall down, sometimes the other ants will help it move back up onto the wall. But that's only if they have they, that's only if they don't have a lot of them. And you will see that in our colony, we have a lot. And up here, we have a lot of repeat, repletes. So in our case, if we, since they have a lot, they're just gonna drain this ant. They're gonna take all of the nectar from inside of this ant and they're gonna move it to a new ant. And then this ant is going to die. Now I know that sounds sad that they would just let the ant die, but there are many, many, many ants in a colony, but no individuals. So the ants work as a team. So we call it a super organism, which means that there's a whole lot of them that act as one. So remember I said that ants cannot live by themselves. They need their sisters to be alive. So it's okay if just one of them dies because the whole super organism is still alive and thriving or doing really well. Now, while we've been watching this area, I'm sure that you've seen ants doing a lot of different things, like the ants over here that are taking care of the eggs. Then we've got ants over here. Where are they? There they are. Just being super lazy and not doing anything. We've got ants over here taking care of the pupae. We also have ants up here that are tending or taking care of the queen who has not turned around yet. They are feeding her. They are keeping her clean. When she lays an egg, they will take the egg and put it into an egg pile. We've got ants over here that are taking care of the larva. Ooh, let's watch these ladies for a second. Let me get my pen in here, or my needle. Look right there. You see that ant and that larva? That ant is feeding the larva. All of these ants, ooh, there's another one that's feeding the larva. Where's my needle? Look right there, you see? Feeding. And you see that black stuff in the body? That's their digestive system and will eventually be their poop. So you can see the inside of them. And then the ants here that are helping the larva build a chrysalis. And look, look at that one. She's like, mm, I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna move. Remember, she was right here just a minute ago. And look, this little ant here is like, come on, come on. You've gotta make your chrysalis or your cocoon. Let's go back down here and look at these ones again. 
there's lots of work going on. Okay, so this area that we have been looking at, this these are their chambers. This is their living chamber. So this would be underground. And these honeypot ants are found in the deserts of, um, of the United States and also in Mexico. So remember, they live in the desert. So this would be underground. And in the desert, you know it's really hot and dry. But underground, it is more moist and cool. So these ladies like it nice and cool. So this room that they're in is very cool. Okay, so now we're gonna move over here and you're gonna have to deal with seeing me too because there is a mirror. This is their foraging area. So this would be like outside above ground in the desert. And you can see there's a little hole right there. That hole, whoop, if we go down here, my light is not gonna make it so that we can see. Let me see, come here. Where's the hole? Right there. Look at that, right where that ant is. That's where that hole comes out of. So when they need to come up and out, that's where they come out of. And look, there are some ants over here foraging. Now I wanna show you, I talked a minute about um, this ant that's down here, what they will do to it after it drains it and then it dies. Then they're gonna carry it and look here. Do you see that ant right there? She has one of her dead sisters and she is looking for her trash pile. And I'm gonna show you their trash pile because they put their trash in the same spot. So this right here is their trash pile. And she's, there. She, oh, is that it? Let's see, is she gonna drop it off? Let's see what she does with it. Nope, she's like, uh, that's not far enough away. So, the ants, they don't want to have the dead ants really close to their home. So they try to put those, the dead ants, as far away as they possibly can. So I wanna show you in the trash pile, you see that those white casings, do you know what those are? Those are the cocoons. So that means the adult has emerged from those and then they throw the cocoon away. Okay, so we are in the foraging area and you see this little tray right there? That's where we put their food. So right now we are going to feed them. So this opens from the top. So I'm gonna open it. We have some Vaseline on there so that um, the ants can't get out because you noticed that they can crawl around. So I've got these very long tweezers, which we call forceps, that I'm gonna reach down in there and I'm gonna make sure that there's no ants on the bowl. There is an ant on the bowl. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna grab this out. And I'm gonna set it right up here. Now, we like to feed all sorts of yummy things. And I am going to clean this out of here. And while I do that, I'm gonna set you up to look at these ants over here. So we can start with a fresh plate for our lady friends. So we feed them um, honey. And this honey comes from my beehives. Do you like honey? I love honey and I am a beekeeper and I always tell people, you have to excuse that sound, that's my rolly chair that I am on. I always tell people you wanna get honey from somebody that you know. So I do not feed these ants honey that I buy from the store because I don't know what's in it. I feed them honey, whoa, hello. <laughs> that was crazy, sorry, sorry friends. Here we go, I feed them honey from my own beehive. I'm just gonna wash this 
food tray out. Get a good clean. Then I'm gonna dry it off. Okay. Now I've got that all ready to go. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna feed to her. So we've got some, uh, this is red raspberry jam. They love that. This is honey from my beehives and it is um, raw honey. It has um, the wax and everything right in there. So, and those little red spots are just some jam. And then, um, oh, I forgot the um, kiwi. Hang on, let me set you back up here. I'm just gonna run and get some kiwi real quick. The refrigerator is just right out here. You can set that up so it doesn't fall. Okay, I'll be right back, friends. some dried cherries and I've also got some dried kiwi here okay let's come back hello all right so this is a dried a dehydrated or dried cherry this is dehydrated kiwi. You can see the kiwi seeds inside of there. So I'm gonna place those into this. This here I've got to slice open because the outside of the cherry, it has a peel on it and so it's hard. But if I slice it open with a razor blade and then open it up, it's easy, it, it's good, it's better for the ants. Okay, and then I'm gonna open my jar here of jam. Okay, so we're just gonna give them a little bit of jam. I'm gonna put that in there. We like to keep it close to the edges so that they can reach it easily. Got my dehydrated fruit. Then I'm gonna get some honey. Now, honey is made by bees. And the bees take the nectar from the flower and inside their body, they mix it with something called invertase. It's an enzyme which the bees make in their body. And then they also store it in their crop, just like the honeypot ants are storing their nectar in their crop. The bees store that uh, nectar in their crop, but it mixes with invertase, which these ants do not have that enzyme invertase, so they cannot make actual honey. Then the bees spit it out into a cell or a little, um, little column that's inside of their colony and they fill it up and they fan it with their wings to dry it out, then they seal it up and then it is honey. So here I just have some distilled water and I am pulling it up into this syringe. You might be asking why. Well, it's because, remember, these ladies eat nectar. So nectar is a liquid and right now this is a solid and this is a solid. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some, a little bit of distilled water into here. And then I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna have to put this down over here. I'm gonna take this um, 
this little painter's spatula and I'm gonna uh, just dig it down into the fruit so that it can become soft and easier for the ants to get the juice out of it. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of honey on top of each of the fruits also. I'm gonna show you what I just did um, as soon as I finish it. It's kind of hard to do that with, with just one hand. I don't know if you noticed, but I do have a Band-Aid on my thumb. I sliced my finger open, my thumb open yesterday. It's really bad. So I've got to have that Band-Aid on. I did have it wrapped with a huge Band-Aid, but I couldn't use my, my thumb at all with that on it. So I put a smaller Band-Aid on it today, this morning. It just happened last night. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put a little bit of honey on top of the fruit. There you go. Get that smashed down in there. And now that fruit that was that fruit that was um, really dry is now juicy. Look at that. So we have given them, let's, let's think about it. We have given them some jam, a dehydrated cherry that I rehydrated or made moist with some distilled water and did the same thing with some kiwi and then honey and then I've put honey on top of the kiwi. So now we're gonna open this back up and I'm gonna put these, this little food tray back down in there. Whoop! Oh, there's an ant crawling up my, you see that? She's like, I see you. There she goes, I got her down. Okay, so there is their food. And look, there's already a lady coming up. She's like, oh, fresh honey, look at them. They're already coming up to get it. They love it. I think this is so good. Okay, now, you know what? That's not the only food that they need because the larvae, they need protein in order to grow. Where does protein come from? Animals, mostly. So these guys actually need dead insects. So in the wild, these workers that are out here looking for nectar are also looking for dead insects. So we use maggots. So if you've ever had an art project with the insect zoo, you would have done maggot art, which is painting with maggots. Maggots are the larvae of flies, which are very, very important for our planet. So we get maggots and we do maggot art with them, but some of the maggots we feed to insects. We don't paint with those ones. We just feed them to the insects. And so this is one of the insects that eats the maggots. So these maggots are dead. We keep them in the freezer and um, now they're nice and soft and squishy. So I'm just gonna take my razor blade and I'm gonna just give them a little slit there just to make them more appetizing for our ants. So I'm gonna open our lid back up. I'm gonna use my big forceps and I'm gonna grab one of those maggots. Oh, doesn't that look so yummy? Look at that juice squeezing out of there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put it right near the entrance so they don't have to drag it so far. Look, there's a little lady. She's like, hey, I can see something is going on up there. 
Let's give them another one. We've got three that we will give them. There's one. And here's one more. Look, she's already coming up to... Look at that. Do you see how fast they are? Look. Let's see, is she gonna bring it down? Do you think she can carry that? Doesn't that look like it's bigger than her? It is bigger than her, but she is very, very, very strong. So let's watch her. I'm gonna see if we have any questions. Okay, let's see here. So I, I have a question at the beginning. Did they make those bubbles? And we talked about that, and yes, they do make those. Look, she's going the wrong way with that. Um, do they make honey? Oh, Samuel, that's a great question. And I did just answer that, but just to answer your question for you, Samuel, they don't make honey like bees make, but they do use the nectar. Where's she gonna go with that? They do use the nectar to feed the ants in their colony. But to be honey, you have to come from a bee and you have to be mixed with that enzyme, the special enzyme, it's like magic. It's called invertase. And then you have to be put into a cell or a little column inside of the colony and dried, get that moisture out, and then they seal it with wax. And then my friend, it is honey. So no, these do not make honey. Let's see what else. Samara wants to know how many ants there are in the world compared to humans. Oh my goodness. There are, we, th there are trillions and trillions and trillions. I don't even know how many ants there are for every human there is at least 100,000 ants, I would, I would say. I'm gonna have to look that up to be for sure, but there are so many ants on our planet, uh, way, way, way more than there are humans. Okay, those are all the questions I have. So if you guys have more questions, you can ask them down in the comments and I will answer them. We have one more thing we're gonna do with our ant friends, and then we're gonna go look at some walking sticks. So one thing that these ants need is water. Everybody needs water. So in nature, whoops, hello there. In nature, the uh, ants would go out and they would find water but they can't really do that here. So to make up from that, we have some watering areas back here. And unfortunately, look, there is one right here. Right up there. They, the, um, these repletes, these big balls are covering them all the time. But we are going to go ahead and give them a little bit of water in one of those. And these are really fancy little tubes. Again, this colony, this formicarium, which is an ant enclosure, the house for the ants, was donated to us from the Isaacs Ant Foundation. And the link to that website is in the comments. Um, Charlie, who commented on that, she is the, the founder of the Isaacs Ant Foundation. So she commented on that and has left that uh, link for all of us down there. Where are you, my friend? So I'm just gonna give her a little drop of water. I'm gonna put this in this tube. I'll show you the tube. Show you, you wanna see the tube? So this is the back of the formicarium. And you see these here, these are vent holes. And then these here are the watering tubes. So it's really easy. And you might, if you've ever been to the hospital and gotten an IV, that's what these are from. So I'm gonna just put this in there. You see how that? And again, this is just some distilled water. 
And I'm gonna come back around here and I'm going to just give them a little bit. I'm just gonna do it until the water drop comes out. There it is. Okay, then I'm gonna disconnect from here. And we just do one at a time. That's all we do. Oh, now does anybody have any more questions about the ants? Because we're gonna go into a different room where we have walking sticks and we are gonna talk about them. If you do have questions about the ants, you go ahead and ask them down here in the comments. And when we're done with the walking sticks, I will answer the ant questions if there are any. Okay, I'm gonna turn the screen around. Hello again, it's me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go into this other room. I turned my screen around because right now we only have one student who's able to work. We usually have five. So things are not as clean as they should be. So first thing I'm gonna do is show you the room we're in. So this is our walking stick room. We call it the humid room. Ooh, I saw a question. Have you ever eaten a honeypot ant? Yes. So you can eat honeypot ants. They, um, in some parts of the world where they are found, they are a delicacy. They're like a candy. It's a great gift to give um, honeypot ants. Um, they're very, very tasty. They're very sweet because nectar is sweet. So that was a great question. Okay, so um, in each of these enclosures is a different type of a walking stick, except this one, which is grasshoppers, which we are gonna talk about. Um, we're gonna start with the grasshoppers, how about that? So these are lubber grasshoppers. Let me see if I can get, ooh, I just, look, you hear that? Those are humidifiers. Can you see that, what looks like smoke coming out of there? That is humidity, so that is water. So that's gonna get pretty loud. So I'm actually gonna turn that off for right now. I have to remember to turn it back on before I leave. I'm gonna turn my screen around and I'm gonna get set this up here. Hi! <laughs> so that I don't have to carry around the, the phone. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you these lover grasshoppers. And they jump a little bit, they don't jump too far. They mostly climb. Oh, they are so amazing. Come here, you go in here. You go in there. Go on in there. You also go in there. Okay. This is a great pair right here. And then go back in. There we go. Didn't want any of them escaping. Okay, so this is perfect. So this is a male and a female Eastern Lubber, L-U-B-B-E-R, Eastern Lubber Grasshopper. Can you tell which one is the male and which one is the female? So the female is the one on the bottom. This one right here, the one that is bigger. And the male is on top. So you may be able to guess what they were doing before we interrupted, but they were mating. So in the world of arthropods, Usually the females are bigger than the males, and that's because it takes a lot of energy to lay eggs to make a new insect. It takes a lot of energy to do that. So they're usually bigger. Aren't those guys cool? They have very colorful wings, but they cannot fly. Let me see if I can put this male back real quick, and I'm going to show you their wings, and then we're going to talk about what makes a grasshopper a grasshopper. Go on. 
He says, I want to leave my hand. He's like, you took me away from my friend. I miss my girlfriend. <laughs> so if you look at her wings, they are very colorful, but she cannot use them to fly. But she can use them to help protect herself because bright colors on an animal means dangerous. So they're very brightly colored. So she can open those up and she can um, scare, try to scare away another animal by looking big and bright and colorful. Now, what makes a grasshopper a grasshopper? Well, first it has chewing mouth parts. So they're mouth parts that they chew with. And you see that cute little face right there? Isn't that so cute? So those are chewing mouth parts. But also they have these big jumping legs. You see those legs? This part right here would be like our thigh. Let me get her little wing out of the way here. Get out of the way, wing. Those, this big part right here would be like her thigh, would be like our thigh, very big. And then they bend them, and then when they jump, they spring forward and they jump. Now, these guys, they are very clumsy and not very good jumpers. They can only jump a couple inches, so it's not very far at all. So there is the Eastern Lubber Grasshopper. I like to say, I love them. <laughs> Get it? Love them. Okay, I'm going to put her away. And this guy. So what do Lubber Grasshoppers eat? We feed them leaves. We also feed them things like sweet potatoes, um, but they don't like fruits and vegetables, or they don't like fruits. They don't like that's too much sugar for them. Okay, now we're gonna look at a walking stick. So first I wanna show you, you see my t-shirt? So this is a jungle nymph walking stick, and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Come here, little lady. She is playing dead. She's not. <laughs> so this is a jungle nymph walking stick, just like on my t-shirt. So this jungle nymph walking stick is from Malaysia. And doesn't really look like a stick, does it? But you don't have to be a stick to be a walking stick. This lady looks more like a living leaf, and it is a female. I know it's a female because with this species, the males are much, much bigger. I'm sorry, the females are much, much bigger than the males. Now, I don't have a male right now of this. In fact, this is the last one that we have, so I can't show you what, what it looks like. But I do have a male of a different species, or different kind that looks very that looks very similar to the male of this one. So the male is thin and brown. It would only be about this long and this wide, and it would look like a dead leaf. So much different. Now you notice how she's got her arms stretched out, her front legs stretched out really long, and she's holding very still. Her long antennae, you see those long antennae, are down on her back. So she doesn't want me to know that she's a living animal. So she is trying to act like a leaf, not just look like a leaf, she's also trying to act like a leaf. Now I wanna show you some different characteristics on her. Let's start back here since she's still stiff. You see this point right here? Doesn't that look like a stinger? does, but it's not a stinger. It is actually called an ovipositor. Ova means egg and posit means to put. So it is her egg putter. She uses this to drill down into the ground about two to three inches and then lay an egg. And that egg that she lays is the heaviest egg of any insect that we know of. And that egg is gonna take over a year to hatch, my friends, for a walking stick or an insect, that is a very long time. I'll give you an example of honeybees. Their eggs hatch in three days, three days. This one takes a year. 
Now, this is an insect. It has six legs. We can see she's got one, two, three legs on this side, and guess what? One, two, three legs on the other side. She does also have three body parts, starting with her head, and then the middle part is her thorax, and then this back part right here is her abdomen. So she is an insect. I'm gonna turn around too so you can see the underside. So head, the thorax ends right here, and then her abdomen. Isn't she gorgeous? She's doing a really great job playing dead right now, but I'm gonna make her uh, do something that's pretty cool. So if I pretend like I'm going to eat her, watch, <gasps> do you hear that sound? Watch her. Whoa, look at that. So this is what I call walking stick yoga. <laughs> it's the downward stick pose. So she, went, but what she's really doing, not yoga, you see these spines all over her legs? She's trying to poke me with those spines. You see how she scissor kicks? She's kicking. She's trying to poke me with those spines so that I will be poked with them and I'll be like, ouch, that hurt. And I will drop her and I will not eat her for dinner. Now that sound is coming from the wings. Listen. She is rubbing her wings together to make that sound. She cannot fly with those wings. They are just there to make that sound, but also she does have bright colors under there. Oh, she got me. There she goes. Yep, she's got me. <laughs> Another thing she's trying to do is to fall over. So if you touch a leaf on a tree too many times or too hard, what's that leaf gonna do? It's gonna fall. So she's also trying to fall like a leaf and that's the way she's gonna get away. She can't fly, so falling from her tree where she is perched is going to make her get away as fast as she can. So that is the jungle nymph walking stick. We're gonna put her away because now she is thoroughly annoyed with me. What do we feed walking sticks? Plants. So we feed them bramble, which is the leaves of the blackberry bush. So that's what we feed them. They can also feed on some other things too. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, this next walking stick, which I love, I love, love, love. This next walking stick. Come here, my friend. Hello. How are you? Oh, yes. Awesome, amazing. This is so cool. All right, I'm getting them. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm getting them. Oh, you could kind of see me. Okay, so I'm gonna put this guy. Whoa, hello, hello. Ah. How about you not do that? There you go. Okay, we're gonna put you here. And I'm gonna pick you back up. Okay, so here I have two walking sticks. Whoa, hello. You see the two? I have two. <laughs> so these are called Australian spiny walking sticks. Check them out. So they are from Australia, and one is the male, one is the female. Can you guess which is which? <laughs> Can you guess? This one's the female, and this one flying around is the male. And you know the jungle nymph walking stick we just looked at, the big green one? The males look very similar to this male right here. And they, can, they have wings and they can fly. Now this female right here, she only has, here you go up there, maybe you like it there. Nope, see those little wing buds? Can she fly with those? No, so she does not fly. Look, he's gonna crawl up on the camera. <laughs> I wish you guys could see this right now. He's on the camera. There he is. Woo, now he flew right onto my shirt. <laughs> he's just flying all over. 
So, no, she cannot fly with those little wing buds. So she does not fly. Look how big she is. She is full of eggs. This right here, she does not have an ovipositor. She just drops her eggs. So she does not have the point like the jungle nymph walking stick. Instead, she just hangs up in the trees and she drops her eggs. Now, you notice I've also got another one on my shoulder here. They are different colors. So they can be different colors, which is super cool. So there is variation or differences in the colors that they are. And you can change the color of your walking stick by feeding it something different. But all these walking sticks feed on the same thing. Now I wish you guys could smell this walking stick. This walking stick smells like butterscotch, which is really good. I love, if I rub her here, oh yeah. Yep, she smells like butterscotch. I always smell my animals. It's good to know what you're smelling or what they smell like. So she lets out that odor that smells like butterscotch because animals don't really like that smell. I mean, we like that smell, we are animals, um, but other animals don't. So it makes it so that she does not, animals don't wanna eat her. Now, if you also look, look at her abdomen. Do you see how it's curled up? So she is trying, oh, she's doing her dance for you. Watch her. Let's see if I can get her to do it again. Come on, let's give me a little dance. You know, she's trying to look like a scorpion by keeping her abdomen curled up like that. And you notice she looks like a dead leaf, right? So the last walking stick we looked at looked like a living leaf. This walking stick looks like a dead leaf. Now they're doing, she does that little walking stick dance. Let me see if I can get the, oh, you're stuck on my Band-Aid. See, this is why I put a smaller Band-Aid on. Let me see if this one will do it. Come on. They have little tarsal claws that help them to hang on. Let's see if I can get her to do her little dance. You do over here. Will you do your little dance? Do your little dance? She was like, nope, not gonna dance. So they'll sway back and forth. Because if you touch a leaf, is it just gonna run fast? No, it's not gonna move at all, but if it, or it is gonna move, but it's gonna move like this. It's just gonna wave back and forth. So if they just ran away, you might know that they are something that you could eat. They're a living animal. How about now? Nope, not gonna sway. Okay, let's look at the male. Let's see if he will let me hold him without flying away. <laughs> He's down here. He ended up down here. Okay, so the male, whoop, he's not gonna let me just hold him. So you notice he does have wings, right? He's flying. There he goes. So he can get from place to place, but the females, they're gonna live in the same tree for their life. Hello. Come here. Check him out. They want to see your face. Whoop! <laughs> there he is. He can walk very fast, can't he? Hey, guy. How's it going? Hi. Oh! <laughs> he almost flew, flew right on my face. Look at him. Whoa, he flew really far that time. Now, one of the benefits of looking like a dead leaf is that you can also hang out on the ground. And nobody will know who you are. Now, these walking sticks have a really awesome life story. I'll let you hang out a little bit. So, they start their life off as an egg, just like our ants did. And that egg, it looks like a little seed. And there is a species or kind of ant in Australia which eats seeds. Well, they find these seeds from these walking sticks. Well, these eggs that look like seeds. And they taste it, and they put their antennae on it. And the thing is, is that these eggs from this walking stick, they have this sweet flavor that's like the smell of the walking stick. It tastes kind of like butterscotch. And of course I know that because I have tasted one of the eggs. So they, 
think, hmm, this is a seed, it's gonna taste good, let's bring it back to our colony. So they bring it down into the ant colony underground and they put it over into their food storage pile or maybe just into their trash pile. And, and sometimes they, they lick off that layer on the outside that tastes like butterscotch. So now that egg is in the trash pile or in the food storage area. And that is the perfect place to both protect and incubate that egg. So the baby walking stick, when it emerges or hatches from that egg, guess what it looks like? It looks like the ants that collected it. So when these walking sticks hatch out of their egg, they are a mimic of an ant. They look just like an ant. They can crawl out of that colony that has protected them and kept them warm and they can start living their life above ground. Now, when they're trying to get out of that colony, the other ants don't even notice them because they look like the other ants and they smell like the other ants. Come here, lady. So there is our Australian spiny walking stick. I'm gonna put these ladies away. Where's the other one? Can you see it? Oh, there she is. Come here. All right, so we're going to put those ones away. Where's the male? He flew over here. Say bye to our right, rowdy male. Bye. <laughs> oh, he was dancing. You see how he sways back and forth? You see that? Oh, see, he did want to give you a show. That's the walking stick dance. You can do a walking stick dance. Just put your hands up like this and like this. <laughs> there he is. He's pretty cool, isn't he? All right, let's send him away. And then I'm going to show you, no, away. <laughs> now he doesn't want to go back. Gotta make sure I close this up. Can't get out. Although the babies are very good at getting out, because there, there is it's their nature to escape from an ant colony. So they are very good at escaping. Now I want to show you this other walking stick. Let's see. We're gonna pick you for sure, and we're gonna pick you. Yeah or no? Which one of you wants to come out? Hello. Mm -hmm. I'm looking. Oh, there, there we go. Come here, friend. Oh yeah. Okay. Now these walking sticks are called New Guinea spiny walking sticks. These guys come from Papua New Guinea very far away from Iowa. This one is the male, and this one is the female. Now this male is very, very big, very big. And this female is also big, and you notice that she's kinda, so sometimes when you see, she looks like somebody, something took a bite out of her. Now, nothing actually took a bite out of her, but when they molt or shed the exoskeletons, they are, they sometimes can get a little messed up whenever their body is hardening again. And so that's what happened to this one. She's fine though. She's probably laying eggs. If we look at her, you can see this point right here. That is the ovipositor. That's how she lays her eggs. Now she does not have any wings at all. And she looks like bark. She's very thick and rough. And she's also very tough. So her exoskeleton is very, very hard. You want to see her little face? Say hi. Their mouth parts are so cool. Okay, I'm going to put her on my shirt. She lets me. There you go, lady. Then we're going to look at the male. The male is so awesome and so strong. 
Now, do you remember our jungle nymph did the walking stick yoga? So will this guy. Watch this. Whoa. <laughs> but look at these giant spines. He's got one here and one over here. So, oh, and he's also trying to kick me. But while he's doing this, he's got this bubbly, squishy gland right here. You see it? It goes in and out. That gland is letting out an odor that smells like a musky skunk. It's an awful smell. So look at him. He's like, ah, you see, it's coming out. It's because he's letting it out right now. And I can smell it. And if you were here with me, you would smell it too. Now, these spines back here are so strong, they can poke right through your skin. I have been poked before. But also, the natives in Papua New Guinea will use those as fishing hooks. That's how strong they are. They can also be used as sewing needles too. Now again, these guys eat leaves. Look at his long antennae. Aren't they super long? Now a really cool thing about this species of walking stick is that the males will actually help to protect the females. So they like to congregate or group together another insect that could not do social distancing like us humans are doing right now. So they, the males are usually on the outside of the females. The females are all inside. And that's because they have these extra protections. They have the smell. They also have these sharp spines on their legs, but also because that's how they mate too. So they're doing multiple different things. Look at that cute little face. Isn't he just so cute? I think he is just adorable. He really is. Okay, I'm gonna put him away. And then I just have one more walking stick I'm going to share with you. So if you have any questions at all, you just pop them into the comments and I will answer them. Okay. All right, here's the last one I'm gonna show you. It's right in here. Come here, little lady. All right. So this is another walking stick from Malaysia. It doesn't look just like a stick. It sure does. She's got those front legs stretched out long so she can look even more like a stick. So this one does not have an ovipositor like the others. So it just, excuse me, hangs out in the trees and it lays eggs. And you know what? We only have females of this walking stick. No males. They reproduce or make babies without males. It's called asexual reproduction or parthenogenesis. So every egg that she lays is just like a clone of her. And it will be a female just like she is. So these walking sticks can drop their legs off on purpose. So if you are a predator and you pick up a walking stick by a leg, that walking stick can just drop its leg off. Isn't that so cool? So then you, the predator, you only have this leg inside of your mouth. And the walking stick has fallen to the ground and you don't even know it because that leg is still moving. Even though that leg is not on the body anymore, the muscles inside of it are still working, so the leg can still move. So you, as the predator, you think you have something tasty to eat, but really, all you have is a scrawny little leg. There's our walking stick. Very cool. Okay, guess what, my friends? <gasps> you know what I just saw? I'm so excited. Do you remember me talking about the Australian walking stick and how when it hatches, it looks like an ant? We have one that just hatched. So let me get her out of here. Where are you? Where did you go to? Hello? Oh, there you are. You're down on the bottom now. Let me just get her out of here. There she is, she's coming up already. She's like, oh, it's coming. Look at that, 
That is a baby Australian walking stick. And you see how it's got that big head just like an ant has, and it's red, and the rest of the body is black. The ants in Australia that pick up the seeds for of these walking sticks have a red head and are black. So right now it is a mimic of an ant. Isn't that so cool? And you see how fast she walks because she's trying to find her way out to some leaves so that she can eat lots of food. But we have her in a little enclosure where she eats. So sometimes we walk into this room and there's babies. These, these little baby walking sticks are uh, hanging out on the ceiling or on the walls because they have escaped from their enclosure. But don't worry, they can't escape from this room. This room is escape proof. Look how fast she goes. She is so fast. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put her away. Nope, back in there. She's like, no, I don't wanna go in there. Nope, back in there. <laughs> They're so good at escaping. All right, let's move you back over here, my lady. Okay, hey, guess what, friends? That is everything that I had to share with you today. So, oh, let me check and see if I have any questions. No more questions. So if you have questions you wanna ask, you can go ahead and post them below and I will check back on the video later and I will explain the answer uh, by typing it instead of by telling you in word. So my friends, thank you so much for joining us today. I also wanted to mention that we do have Insect Zoo t-shirts. Uh, we are running a special right now for $10 a t-shirt. Usually they're $15. So if you would like one, you can send me a Facebook message through the Insect Zoo's um, Facebook page, or you can email me zoo at iastate.edu and you can let you know uh, if you, we have different kinds. So this one is the jungle nymph uh, t-shirt, but we also have a scorpion. Um, we also have cockroaches. Um, we have limited supply of the scorpion and we also have a tarantula, also limited supply. But we are coming out with a new t-shirt very, very soon. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. So it's been a secret, nobody knows it, but I'm gonna tell you that it's gonna be Honey Pot Ants. So our next t-shirt is gonna be Honey Pot Ants. So excited. And uh, you're the first to know, just so you're aware. Except for our artist, our artist knows what it is. So thank you guys for tuning in with the Insect Zoos live with Honey Pot Ants, Walking Sticks, and Why Not Grasshoppers. And next, or this Friday will be our next uh, live. Not sure what we're going to do yet, but I will make an event and I will announce it on our Facebook page. So thank you very much. Go forth and love the bugs, my friends.